Hello and welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. I'm now going to be going through the three hook flapper rig. This is what I would generally call a scratching rig and that's that you use it for scratching round for whatever species you can find. Pouting, whiting, codling, gurnards, anything that's there. All you're doing is trying to catch a fish. Now there are two ways of making this rig. You can make it either simply with blood loops or you could make it with beads and crimps. I'm going to show you both. I would use the blood loop method, which is this. As you can see, it is really as simple as it could be. I use this for if I'm fishing from a boat into rough ground. Mainly because if I come snagged and I lose the rig, I don't want to be losing a lot of components and money. All this is to swivel, some line, three hooks, a snap swivel and a lead. To start off with, I like to use 50-60 pound mono. The only thing that really limits you on this is the size of the eye on the hook that you're using. See, your line has to be able to pass through here when doubled over. Onto one end, first you're going to connect your barrel swivel. This is just a normal standard barrel swivel. Palmer knot on the top, great for terminal tackle because it's very strong. Loop through, wet it, tighten down. As you saw with the blood loop video that I made, all you simply do is you make a loop and then pass one part of it through the loop and then keep passing it through the loop and through the loop and through the loop and then take this piece through that piece now depending on how big you want your hook lengths I've I don't see there's any reason to have them more than three or four inches with this rig if you're fishing in rough ground from the boat. I will talk to you about fishing from the shore when I make the rig the other way. There's your first loop, there's your first hook length. Go about a foot further down, make another loop, start passing through, passing through. Tight. That's your second hook link. There you go. You could have this, and that would just be a two hook flapper. Three hook flapper, three. Make a loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Watch it. Put it tight. Another foot further down, tip it off, double loop. As I showed you in the double loop video, simple overhand knot, go through it twice, hence the double part of the double loop. Wet it, put it down. Take off your tag end, pass the loop through the ivy swivel, then pass the swivel through the loop. This way, it locks down on the swivel. There is your trace. All you do now is get your hooks and pass the loop through the eye of your hook. Like that. And then push the hook through the loop. There you go. You can alternate, you can use different hooks if you want to. Um, I find again, because I'm fishing into rough ground with this rig, I don't want to be using expensive hooks. This isn't a high precision rig. These aren't high precision hooks. These are just simple 
O'Shaughnessy standard. I think these are a 2 or a 3 or Perfect for a little strip of squid, a little strip of mackerel. And then all you need to do is connect your weight onto the end. Job done. Three hook, one, two, three, flapper rig. Now, you notice with the blood loops, all the hooks stand off proud. Now, the only negative of this being that if you get one of these damaged, your rig's damaged. You can't change your hook length because the hook length is part of the rig. Whereas with the bead method, as I will now show you, they aren't connected to the main line. They are just connected to a swivel. For this, again, I would take a normal barrel swivel and connect it to the end of three feet, three and a half feet, normal polymer knot. There. The components that you'll need for the bead method are here. First thing you're going to slide onto is a crimp, then the bead, then a small trace swivel, then a bead and a crimp. And you simply repeat this process three times. So effectively, that is what you have. Crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp. Do that three times. We aren't going to tighten these down yet. I will explain about that in a moment. So, crimp, bead, swivel. You can use whatever colour bead you want. I like keeping mine the same and alternating. So I'll use two reds, two greens, two reds, or all yellows. They look the same again. Crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp. And the last ones. Now for crimps, you should technically use a pair of crimping pliers. But I've found that as long as you're careful, a normal pair of pliers will work just as well. Right, this is what it should look like. Onto the end of your rig, because all you're going to put is a weight, I quite like a quick link. Palomar knot on the end. This is generally a finer, more precise version of the rig. I would use this when fishing from the shore. When fishing from the shore onto sand, you could use it on the boat, but it's not, in this format, it's not for your big fish. You'd be scratching around, you could use it uh, for your small, for your mini species, for your small wrasse, like your gold sinnies, your rock hooks. Again, you could size it up, stronger, bigger swivels, or you could size it down. Say for instance, this is my mini species scratching rig that I use down the side of a pier wall. Now this is 20 pound line and like size 10s. I put like a little loomy bead on every now and again just because I feel it adds a bit of attraction and a double loop on the bottom. Now you're going to set where you want your hook lengths to be. Now you could simply standardize it and you could just go this is three foot long I'll have them a foot apart or you could think I'll have one right up near the top and one midway down and one right at the bottom because whatever distance you put them at, if you put them at a foot apart, your hook lengths need to be shorter than a foot. I like to have one a few inches above the weight and have a long hook length. 
and then one up six inches from the top and I've a five or six inch hook length and then one bang in the middle. Right, take your normal pliers and six inches, just take hold of your, your crimp and gently deform it. Now you haven't crushed it, you've just deformed it slightly, just so it holds on. Because what you need to do is you need to make sure when you push this crimp down, it needs to be just tight enough so that this swivel spins like this. If it's too tight, the swivel won't spin. If it's too slack, too far apart, just slides up and down. Defeats the object because the line will get trapped around there and you'll foul up. So because you've depressed this one slightly, turn it upside down. Take hold of this crimp. Gently slide them up against the others. Just, I say gently, just so there's enough movement. And gently depress. There, look. Perfect. He says. It's not tight enough. As I said, gently. That was obviously, obviously too gently. There. Now that you have these together in the places you want, you can crush them slightly further. Don't be too energetic with it because you'll damage the line. Once you've done it, you test it to see that the crimp hasn't damaged the line. That's still strong. Now, my bottom one, just do it in opposite. Like I say, I like to have it six inches. Gently depress it. Gently depress it. Slide them down. Gently depress the other side. Very tight. Right, there you go, perfect. Now all you need to do, tighten them up. Because, because this length, this end, all you've got is your weight below, you can afford to have a longer hook length because it's gonna be past the weight. With this one, this hook length is not going to be any longer than this distance, so it's only gonna be six inches long. Therefore, this next one here could be, say if you put it midway, that would allow this bottom hook length to be this long without snagging. Same as before, tighten up one side first. Turn it over. Find that happy distance where you're just snuggling against it, not pressing too hard. There we go, still moves perfectly. Tighten them down proper. Test. There you go. Now comes to your hook lengths. I like this 15 pound fluoro. It doesn't tangle up so much, it doesn't deform. Sometimes when you bring them in the other fish and it's wrapped round, all your lines kink to pieces with fluoro. It generally resists kinking and if it does, all you do is you just pull against it tight, flatten itself out again. Now, your top hook length, as I said, needs to be short needs to be six 
six inches because any higher uni, uni knots and she swivel rather than a polymer because you can't use a polymer in this case. Right. So I'm going to cut it to that length so that my hook won't, when I cast, my hook won't come up and fall around my swivel. Central hook length. That is as long as it is allowed to be. So you could make it 10 inches long, that'd be fine. Now for the hooks. What I like to use on the bottom, as with my one up, one down, or the one I like to use an Aberdeen style on the bottom because it is the bait that is anchored on the bottom. So it presents a worm bait better for your place, your flounders, your dabs, on the top hooks, which are generally suspended off the bottom, if you're fishing from from the shore on a beach and it's a gently sloping beach, all three hooks will generally be in contact with the bottom. If you're fishing from an elevated position, say halfway up a cliff, and you're fishing down onto an area of clean ground, maybe your top hook is suspended off the bottom. If you're fishing from high elevation, like off a pier, straight down, only your bottom hook will be in contact with the seabed. Your bottom hook length now because you have left this long length it can be up to this length no longer otherwise it would catch over here when you cast Like I say, you can scale them down if you want. Generally what I'm doing is, if I'll be fishing off a pier and it's snaggy ground, like kelpie around the pier, I'll scale one rod right down, fish very light with a spinning rod, just with two small hooks like 10s, 12s, with little tiny scraps of mackerel or ragworm, fishing for gobies or gold sinny wrasse, rock cut wrasse, corkwing wrasse, that type of thing. There we go. That hook length, that length. I really do like the Aberdeen style. This is a stinger, Sukuma stinger. I think it's a one-o. I've had great results with this. I'm only going to show you this hook tied on because the other two are of no real consequence. They are what they are. But this one, as I will explain with weight, one, two, three, four, As you have your leg connected, if you're fishing onto a beach, a gently sloping sandy beach, you could use a round lead, in which case you can allow your rig to roll around a bit. The only problem with this being is your bottom hook, as you have made it longer than, as this sits on the bottom, this will, as this weight sits on the bottom and this goes off to your rod, this will be below the weight. If you are using a round lead and this rolls, it can end up getting wrapped around there. Right, the swivel should combat that. See how that did that? Because this isn't properly tight, if it all gets wrapped up like that, all that happens is that the swivel spins around comes free. That's why you do this. If you were using say a blood loop and it did that, all it would end up doing 
was it would just get fast around. No matter what you did to it, it would still stay tangled up. If you were fishing on anywhere but a sandy beach, I like to use a flat edged lead. That way it sits. It will occasionally roll a little bit with the tide and with, with waves, but it will generally stay where it is. So that this hook length will just end up down in the tide. With your flounders and your dabs, what I like to do, once you've cast out at full range, if you haven't had a bite, five minutes, 10 minutes, give it a little bit of a wind, reel it in a bit, move it 10 feet. This flat lead, all it will do is just slide along the bottom and shouldn't foul up around your hook length. That's two different ways of the three hook flapper rig.